I won't even say it's arguable. It is simply a fact that there are too many top level domains, otherwise known as a TLD. That little bit you see at the end of a URL. Things like .com, .net, .org, .xyz, .page, .online, and some of the more specialized ones like .moe, .dating, and .gay. The numbers are tracked a little bit weirdly, but as of 2023, there was around about 1500 TLD. Many of these have a legitimate purpose. Many of these were created solely for the purpose of making more money. But there is a set of really heavily used TLD that most people don't realize what they actually mean, because they had an original purpose, and then got adapted into something new. Great examples of this are .ai, .tv, .gg, and today's topic, .io. You may reasonably assume that all of these were made for the thing their name represents. TV, TV, AI, artificial intelligence, GG, something related to gamers, IO, input and output. But none of that's true. That's just what they're being used for now. All of these are exactly the same as .uk, .au, .jp, .br. These are country code top level domains. These are TLD that were originally intended to be used for websites in a certain region. .tv is for Tuvalu, .ai is for Anguilla, .gg is for Guernsey, and .io is the British Indian Ocean Territory. But this raises a very important question. What happens when a country or territory just ceases to exist? And I don't necessarily mean the landmass going away, that could certainly happen. What I mean is what if a country takes over another region that already has a country code top level domain, or what if a region declares its independence and becomes a whole new country, but that region already has a country code top level domain? What do you do with the TLD? Do you make a new one? Do you delete it? Countries don't usually disappear, but it certainly does happen, and that's what IO is going to have to deal with. This is the disappearance of an internet domain by Gareth Edwards, and this might be as close as we ever get to making a true geopolitics video. So, on October 3rd, the British government announced that it was giving up sovereignty over a small tropical atoll in the Indian Ocean known as the Chagos Islands. The islands would be handed over to the neighbouring island country of Mauritius, about 1,100 miles off the southeastern coast of Africa. This is the region that was previously known as the British Indian Ocean Territory, the region assigned .io. Now, if Mauritius didn't already have a TLD, it would be a little bit weird and things wouldn't exactly line up correctly and they would have to flub some of the rules to make it work, but they could just easily be transferred over and nothing would be a problem. They already have one though, .mu. This is another one that often gets used for other things like music and museums. Whether it's GitHub.io, which is a very, very popular way to host a website, gaming site itch.io, or even Google I.O., which arguably kicked off the trend in 2008, I.O. has been a constant presence in the tech lexicon. Another great example of this is the video game trend known as I.O. games. Now, I.O. game doesn't really mean anything, but it was started by this game called Agario. Usually what it means is like a very simple game that has very simple controls. It literally doesn't mean anything actually important, but there are a lot of games you'll see that use a .io domain. Its popularity is often explained by how it represents the abbreviation for input slash output or the data received and processed by any system. What's not often acknowledged is that it's more than a quippy domain. It's a country code top level domain related to a nation, meaning it involves politics far beyond the digital world. Other great examples being .am and .fm, which you might reasonably assume are used for radio stations. 
once again, those are country code top level domains, including .co, which a lot of people use instead of .com. If it is a two character long TLD, it is a country code top level domain. Now, once the region is handed over, the British Indian Ocean Territory will cease to exist. Various international bodies will update their records, in particular, the International Standard for Organization, ISO, will remove the country code IO from its specification. The Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, the IANA, which creates and delegates top-level domains, uses this specification to determine which top-level country domains should exist. Once IO is removed, the IANA will refuse to allow any new registrations with a .io domain. It will also automatically begin the process of retiring existing ones. There is no official count on the number of extant .io domains, meaning they have no idea how many of these exist. Now a bit later, we'll get into how this is supposed to be handled and how it might end up being handled instead. But before that, even though the internet hasn't been around for that long, this is a problem that has had to have been dealt with in the past before. In fact, it's been dealt with twice already, within the same decade. There are two organizations responsible for domains and internet addresses. The IANA decides what should and shouldn't be a top level domain, such as .com, .org, .uk, or .nz. The organization originated at the University of Southern California Although it was only formalized in 1994 when it won a contract put out by the US, it operated for several years as a small research and management committee. As the internet grew, it became clear that a more formal setup was required. By 1998, the IANA became part of a new organization, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. ICANN. Now, ICANN is based in the US and was given the broader responsibility of overseeing the operational stability of the internet and ensuring international interests were represented. Now, having a formal process like this was very important because of what happened a few years prior. On September 19th, 1990, the IANA created and delegated the top level domain.su to the USSR. On December 26th, 1991, the USSR had already collapsed. At the time, nobody thought about what should happen with the .su domain. The internet as we know it was still years away. So, the .su domain was handed to Russia to operate alongside its own .ru. The Russian government agreed that it would eventually be shut down, but no clear rules around its governance or when it should happen were defined. As such, it is still active today, and there is zero indication of it ever being shut down. Because it's been around now for 30 years, why bother getting rid of it? The problem is it's kind of like very barely moderated, so it's often a home for cybercrime. And then, a few years later in 1992, the IANA learned a similarly harsh lesson at the end of the Balkan Wars, which saw the breakup of Yugoslavia into several smaller states. In its aftermath, the joint nation of Serbia and Montenegro attempted to adopt the name Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Slovenia and Croatia objected, claiming that it implied Serbia and Montenegro were Yugoslavia's legitimate successors, the two countries protested to the UN. Now, <laughs> the problem is Yugoslavia also had a top level domain. So if two of the countries that were part of Yugoslavia say, we're now Yugoslavia, do they get the top level domain? Or what about the countries that were part of the region, but objected to this happening? Should they get it? Um, I don't know. And neither did the IANA, who remained unsure about who should control .yu. Email access and internet were now integral to research and international discussions, and the INA's ambiguity led to an extraordinary act of academic espionage. So Slovenian academics travelled to Serbia at the end of 1992. Their destination was the University of Belgrade in the country's capital. On arrival, they broke into the university and stole all the hosting software and domain records for the .yu top-level domain. 
everything they needed to seize control. For the next two years, the YU domain was unofficially operated by Arnes, Academic Research Network of Slovenia, which repeatedly denied its involvement in the original heist. So they were operating it out of their region. And they're like, nope, nope, we had nothing to do with this. I don't know how it happened, it just got here. Uh, I don't know, man, like, it, <laughs> it just suddenly appeared. <laughs> It's such a stupid excuse. The situation became so messy that in 1994, the IANA founding manager, John Postal, personally stepped in and overrode IANA regulations, forcibly transferring ownership of the .yu domain back to the University of Belgrade. But then, remember this thing, the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. In 2006, Montenegro declared independence from Serbia. With the digital revolution now firmly underway, the IANA was determined not to let chaos reign once again. It created two new top-level domains, .rs for Serbia and .me for Montenegro. Both were issued on the requirement that .yu would officially be terminated. It would take until 2010 for this to happen, but the IANA eventually got its way. Burned by the experience, the organization laid down the new, stricter set of rules and timescales for top-level domain expiration that exists today. And these are the rules that are probably going to apply to the .io TLD. I say probably because, look, they could certainly flub the rules a bit. So when a CCTLD, a country code top level domain, is no longer eligible, this is when the country no longer exists, it is no longer in the ISO standard, IANA will notify the CCTLD manager that the CCTLD is due for retirement. By default, the CCTLD will be removed after five years. So if we start the countdown, let's say the start of next year, that would mean by 2030 the CCTLD will be publicly advertised as under retirement with the target removal date. A CCTLD manager may apply for an extension with appropriate justification. Extensions are limited to a maximum of five additional years. Therefore, the maximum possible period for retirement is 10 years. So if it was starting from 2025, so 2030 before the extension, and then 2035. But at their own discretion, a CCTLD manager may retire a domain earlier. With all that being said, the IANA is well within their own power to fudge their own rules and allow .io to continue to exist. Money talks, and there's a lot of it tied up in .io domains. .io is very different from something like .jp, for instance. Let's say, I don't know, hypothetically, that South Korea goes and invades Japan, and they're gonna call it... East Korea, I don't know. This would mean that Japan no longer exists and .jp shouldn't either. But that's not really a big deal because .jp was only being used for Japanese domains. .io is a lot bigger than the country that it was assigned to. There are a lot of countries out there that have these very specific TLD where a lot of their economy is actually tied up in people paying for that TLD. I would be very surprised if that was not the case for something like .tv, which is being used by Twitch, and especially, especially .ai with the bubble we're living in right now. But due to two-character TLD being dedicated for use in the country code top-level domains, it would be a first for this to change. I think the least disruptive thing, and it probably just makes sense to do, is because the territory is being taken over by Mauritius, just hand over .io to that region. Yes, they now will have two top-level domain, and yes, they probably shouldn't, because that's just not how it's supposed to work, but I don't see it making sense to do away with something as important as .io. As it currently stands, the IANA has not made any final official statement on what is going to happen, whether it's going to be handed off, whether it's going to be done away with, or anything. So, 
it's unclear where this is going to go in the long run. If you are concerned about whether this is going to be around long into the future, there's well over a thousand TLD that you can go and use that have no restrictions on use that you can go and move to. If you want a bit more of a curated list on some of the ones that are, you know, cool, I guess, or I guess fit technical use cases, here you go. Have a look at some of these, and there are plenty of others that you could go for. But what do you think should be done? Should IO be handed off to another party? Should it be done away with? Should people have just never used it in ways outside of the country just from the start? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, sleep, bear, pay, link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and did you notice the blog was hosted on .to? That's another country code.